Cutie's Cute Creations. Today is week three and four of the Ultimate Picnic Sew Along. And today it says on your paperwork quarter square triangles because we're going to be creating four of them with our blocks. So we have six by six inch blocks. I'm going to get you started and then you're going to just do it at your own pace. And then we'll come back and I'll show you the next set. And what we're going to end up doing with all of these is we're going to create four rows. You got the kit. This is what you end up with. These are the four fabrics. They're all six by six. And then I'll show you how to group them. Keep them straight so that you don't get all confused. This is J and this is N. These two go together. Now, it said to connect these two. But what I've done is I put J and N up here so that I don't get confused with my colors and my letters. Now the directions tell you the first thing they want you to do is to cut all your squares diagonally corner to corner and then you're going to set them aside because you have of these squares, each square, and I've got mine on top of each other, you've got 11 of each one, of each set. That's where the 44 is coming from. So make sure that your ruler extends off of your fabric and I've got it from corner to corner. And then I'm going to rotate my mat without picking it up. The least amount of times that you pick it up, you've not, you haven't disturbed it and it'll come out better. Okay, so that's that. Now we already know that when we sew it, it's going to be sewn like that because it's already connected. All right, so after you've got them all cut out, this is how you're going to pin them. Now this is the way I pinned them. So because I didn't want to start up at the top, I did it this way. So I have the floral on the top, and then I have the dots on the bottom, I have the gingham on the top, and then I have the blue um, little stars on the bottom. So then they're going to look like this. And it shows on the picture. J is on the right, <clears throat> and N is on the left. O is on the left, and M is on the right. I went ahead and I pinned them all, flipped them over, just like that. So that's the way I'm going to sew them. And then what I did, let me move this aside and show you here. I put them all on this layout right here so that they're all just sitting there. And then all I got to do is just pick one up and do it. Here's a whole row, a row, and a row. And, and here on the table also. Okay, so I'm going to just chain stitch them one right after the other. It'll be the fastest way to do them because they're all set up and ready to go. I've pinned them all and everything. Let's get started on our quarter square triangles. Alrighty, so the first one worked. I tried to, I stopped and looked in the drawer trying to find that little, little finger, um, I guess you call it, I don't know what you call it. I'm going to end up with a lot of pens because I went and opened up another box of pens. This finger stylus, that's what I couldn't think of just a minute ago. I just went through a whole drawer and tried to find it, and geez, I can't find it. So, so now I can take my pins off as I pull these up here. When I first started all this, I sewed all these wrong. I sewed them into half square triangles. I don't know what the heck I was thinking. So I had to take them out and redo them. And then when we get done with these these individual blocks here that we're making or well not blocks but triangles we're not uh, squaring anything up until we combine these with the blue ones oops there we go then you just sit and do yours because they should all be cut out and you should be able to put them all together Let you get yours done. You've sewn both of these. You should have a stack like that. And I don't know about you, but I love looking at a stack like this. I mean, oh my gosh. That's bigger than a sandwich. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. When all that fabric's all stacked up and ready to do something else with it. <laughs> all right, let me show you what we're going to do. Now what I've done is I've put my ironing, my wool pad down here, which is right next to the sewing machine. I am taking my, whoops, my blue ones first. And I'm opening them up and ironing them, and then I'm going to do my red ones. 
And the reason I've switched this over is because I'm actually watching a program on television. Right over there. Just so you know. Hope it didn't make you dizzy. So I'm watching TV while I iron these. Just so that I'm not bored. Now we have them all ironed open. And now we're going to combine them and we're going to make squares before we square them up. So let me show you how we're going to lay them out here. Showing. It's showing J and N, O and M. And remember now, when you iron them, you were supposed to turn one one direction and one the other so that when you put them together, you can nestle them. Now we're going to start from the middle outward. So nestle your seam right there, just like that. Let's put a pin here. Because I'm going to sew from this end down. Go up here. You can pin it or clip it, whatever you want to do. In my case, I pin it. And you want to be careful because now you're working with the bias here. And this is the part that stretches. So you're going to be real, real careful when you pin it as well as when you sew it. And I'm going to do a whole bunch of these and put them on my design board and then bring them over here to the sewing machine. So that's the way it should look. So that when it gets sewn and it opens up, it's going to look like this. Alrighty, and then we're going to cut it down to our four and a half inch square. So let's pin all them. It's like a mess, but actually it is all of them pinned. I've got these laying on top of those. And what I've done is I went ahead and I put pink thread on top since this is going to be the top. And I put blue on the bottom for the bobbin. So let's get sewing. <laughs> Just continue. Okay, here I am ironing them open before we go and make them four and a half by four and a half inches. Alrighty, so I've got them all ironed and now we're going to cut them. Two ways to cut them. One, if you by any chance have this ruler, I gotta turn it right side up, the creative grid. This is a four and a half. So if you have a four and a half square, or a four and a half, the distance for the width, because this is by eight and a half, but it's it's going to work for the four and a half. And if you have this specific ruler, let me show you the advantage of this ruler. And let me get my stylus here so I can show you. And see this little circle right here with the plus sign? Okay. If you have this, Here's your advantage. You take your fabric, of course it's going to be on the table, and you put that right there, and when you lay that down, you're going to cut on the right and the left of the ruler, because you know your ruler is going to be off of your fabric, and that's going to have two sides at four. Then you're going to flip your fabric like this and put it back on there, and this time, not only are you lining up this right here, like that, okay, you're trying to get it right smack dab in the middle, and then what you're doing is you're going to line up this part because this side of your fabric and that side will be cut already, and you're going to line it up. I'm going to show you here on the table, but I just want to tell you about this ruler first. Let's say you don't have this ruler, okay, 
Don't worry, let's go with a different ruler. Let's say that you have a smaller ruler. This is four inches wide, so this one won't work. The first thing I did was I marked the two and a half spot with some, let's see if you can see the little, can you see the little line? There you go. There's my two and a half. This is going to be my two and a quarter, because remember, an eighth, a quarter, another eighth, and a half. So first I put the, the, the paper, oh my goodness. First I put the washi tape, you can use any kind of tape, painter's tape, don't use a see-through tape because your ruler is see-through. You want to use something you can actually see on your ruler. You don't want it to blend in. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to mark the quarter. Let's see here. Okay. And I took it off a little bit so that it would hang off the... Okay. And you can either go up an eighth or a quarter. I'm going to go the whole entire quarter. So I'm going up to the mark. Looking at it. Putting it right on it. There we go. There we go. Just take your time. I did a little bit right there. I'm going down further until I get all the way down here. Because you know it's a little bit, it's okay to be a little bit bigger than smaller. Rip my tape off here. And then just roll it back on itself here so I can get it off and grab it. Okay. Now, there's my quarter inch right here. Okay, and I'm like right on the line. Flip it over. There it is right there. Now, I have one, two, and a quarter. So, if you don't have this ruler, which is actually... Oh, get it off the... Hold on one second. Let me get that... Light one turned of these rulers. off. Either the one that's the four and a half, that's my overhead by the sewing machine, or this one. So let's say we're going to use this one first, and I'm going to show you how to cut it. So we're going to get our square down here. I'm trying to make sure the, all of it's in the camera. Let's adjust it here. Okay. Here it is. First thing I'm doing is I'm getting the circle, I'm putting it on my, I got it on my rotating mat. I put it down, I go into the circle, and I'm eyeballing it. Now right now there's no square line, so everything is ragged from putting it together. So we're just estimating it. I take my cutter here, I go off on one side. Rotate it. Go off on the other. Now I'm going to pick up my ruler, put it back down, get it in that circle. Now while I'm looking at it in this circle, what I'm looking at is I want to square it up. So here, I know that this line is straight because I just cut it. I know this one's straight. So I put my fabric so that it's squared, okay? Make sure that this line right here, which is going through that circle, is right through it. And it is. And then I take this off. And I turn it. And I take this off. Now, since my ruler is four and a half, that's a four and a half square right there. That's it. It's four and a half. Let's go this way so you can see it. And it's four and a half. And that's it. We're done. And you set it aside. Ruler. Let's say you don't have that ruler. Okay? And you can do this with any ruler that you want to wipe to do this with the washi tape. So take your square. Put it down here for you so you can see it. And then we want to take it. And now what we want to do is we want to take our ruler and go from the corner, excuse me, from the middle here outward because this is where we're going to cut it at. So we take it and we line it up right here. There's my middle and I'm getting it as straight as I can. I don't have any circles to base it on, but I can look and see that it's straight. I mean, I'm putting it straight up and down on my fabric.
Then I'm going to cut it one time. Then I have to line it up again. So turn it, go one and a quarter. Let's go up here, one and a quarter right there. And you're pretty well eyeballing it. And here's my, here's my center right here where the two pieces meet. And then I gotta turn my mat. Let's put it down here so you can see it. And I hope you saw the last one. Darn, I forgot to, to adjust it. And now here's my center right here. So I put it back down on there, line it up. Now remember, now when you line it up, what you're looking for is you're squaring up up here and you're squaring up down here to make it even. You take it off of there. Turn it around. I'll have to move it over here because you can't see it. Okay, move it around. Put it back down. Square it up again on your fabric. I'm trying to find my line here. There we go. And you're squaring it up the best you can. I've got it right here. And then cut. And there you go. Okay? Just keep this ruler, keep looking at it and making sure that you do the right thing. And that's all you do. And you've got to cut them all out. All right? So go ahead, cut them out. Wish I had, I'm trying to think if I got another ruler to show you for an example. Let me let me get a square ruler because maybe some of y'all just have square rulers. I Hold chose on. this two and a fourth in case you're trying to figure it out and you haven't figured it out yet and you're you're going what I don't understand what you did. Okay, this is what I did. Whatever ruler you have, the width. Okay, if it's not four and a half, which is what we need then what you're doing is you're going, you're splitting your four and a half in half. So half of four and a half, half of four is two. Half of a half is a fourth. Think of a measuring cup. If you've got a half a cup of something and you want half of that half a cup, that's a, a fourth of a cup. So I needed two and one fourth for whatever length of the ruler. So that's half of my amount. That's why when I went to the middle of my block, I'm going and doing half of it and then I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to do the other half of it because this ruler wasn't big enough or this ruler's too big. Okay. That's how I came up with the two and a quarter from the right hand side where my measurement is. Now, if you're left handed, then you're going to use this side here because this has got the, the numbers go this way. Okay. So you can do one, two. You can do that way. Okay, so I got a bigger square right here. This is a nine and a half inch ruler. And I would treat this like this ruler. The only difference is this one's bigger instead of smaller than the four and a half. So I would measure from the right hand side to the left and I would go to one and a half, just like I did on that one. Then when I got my washi tape done, I'd move over to the one and a fourth and this actually shows it. Let me take this off here so you can see it. This ruler actually says one and a fourth and then I would take my next piece of washi tape and I'd go right down and I'd make sure that I could see that white line. In other words, don't bury it. See how you can see the black and the white right here? Put your washi tape like that because it's better to have a little bit bigger than smaller. And then I'd line it up just like before, just like this. Line it up just like this here. Now I'm looking at the fourth here. And there's my fourth. And in this case, I got a, it's a cross right there. And then I would cut and I'm trying to make it in my eye. When I'm looking at it, I'm trying to make it as squared off as I can. So I'm trying to, I'm looking between this, this triangle here and this triangle there. And I'm trying to take my line, which is this black one right here with the three and the three and a half on this side. And I'm trying to make it straight. I mean, I've already got this one straight. So I'm trying to kind of make it straight in here so that I can cut it off. 
Okay, and that's what you want to do if you have an oversized square ruler. I just wanted to make sure that you knew you could use a square one as well as a rectangle. It doesn't make any difference. Now I'm going to cut all of mine with this one here because I have it and it's a lot easier and faster. So that's the way I'm going to cut all mine out. You guys cut all of yours out and then I'll come back to talk to you. So here we have the two stacks. They're 22 each, which is the 44 squares. What I've done is I took all the squares that we've made so far and today, which is those little bitty four and a half inch squares over there, I put them on this makeshift design wall. I just put some felt on a piece of insulation, leftover insulation. So this is what it looks like. And I've got the little extra pieces there. That's 22 of them. And then this right here, all these lined up all the way up to there. That's the other 22. So I hope you liked this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Subscribe if you haven't and you want to see some more. And I'll see you guys next Monday when we put these into rows. All of these things right here, they're going to go into a rows. Four rows a certain way. Alrighty. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Shout out what it looks like. It's sitting on the iron board. I just came on the other side of the cutting table so you guys could see it all laid up there. All right. Can't wait for next Monday. See y'all then. Bye-bye. Take care.